Most city builder games have you building on regular old solid ground. The Wandering Village has you building on a freaking kaiju. And as of the making of this video, it's available to play on Xbox Game Pass. We're taking a look on Xbox Series S, and we should note that this is currently listed as a game preview, so the game is still actively being worked on. As for the genre, I'll admit, city builders aren't the sort of game I ever really play. I've given cities skylines a go a few times, but that's about the extent of it. If you're new to the genre, then this is the video for you. We review a new game from the likes of Game Pass and PlayStation Plus every single week, so if you end up liking the video, do consider subscribing as it really does help us out. And with that, it's time to get a move on and let you know if The Wandering Village is worth your time or if you should wait until construction is finished. I gotta say, I'm pretty pleasantly surprised. Strayfawn has not managed to sell me on the genre, but there is a lot of good going on here. Most city builders have you starting small and expanding out, your main resources are money and space, and sometimes people. The Wandering Village seeks to expand this by having you manage all of the above, but also the kaiju you walk upon. I think this is an excellent expansion on the formula, because it made me engage with the larger world, sending out teams to scavenge and deciding on where Ombu goes at crossroads. The extended world feels like a hostile place that you gather from, be it resources or extra people, rather than just another tile of land, and I like that. You also have a fair bit of control over your village, there's no locked off space and you're free to build where you like, with the exception of some buildings requiring that they be built on specific terrain. You assign people to jobs, and as such, people are a resource. You need to be managing everything well, because new people are actually fairly difficult to come by, and once people start dying, running your village just gets harder. The variety of biomes also felt great. Each one provides a new challenge, and forces you to adapt your village to survive. There was always a new problem to solve, and it kept the game feeling fresh. A lot of the systems feel fairly easy to understand, especially as a newcomer, but the brevity of control over everything gives the whole game some solid depth. It's also super easy to control time and pause the game if you need to make quick, sweeping changes to your village. A usual problem with city builders on consoles is that controlling them is a bit of a mess, and I think The Wandering Village manages to do a fine job of translating controls to console. It's far from perfect, but it's not totally unbearable. If anything, it's just a little bit clunky, but you can get used to it. These kind of games always have the home field advantage on PC. It's not all perfect, I do think that the game does throw a lot at you in the beginning. It always felt like I was being pressured into building the next thing, and I never felt like I had a lot of breathing room to sit down and really take stock of my village. There was always something changing, and I quickly made the novice mistake of expanding far beyond my capabilities, rather than just pausing to take a breath and really figure things out. There's also no top-down view, you're always stuck at some sort of angle, and it makes acutely planning your village harder, because you can't get a good feel for just how much space space some buildings are taking up. Villagers are also very set in their ways, they will do the thing you command them to do and feel pretty slow in doing it. Case in point, I commanded all of my villagers to stop doing anything and they all just stood there and starved to death. Whilst the total control is fun, there is quite a lot to manage and so it'd be nice to have villagers have a bit more automation to them if you want to play that way. Overall, I think this is a solid foundation and I'm excited to see where it progresses. There are a handful of issues and I do think that new players may need to be eased in a little easier. I should know, I'm one of them. However, this is a fantastic twist on the formula and it tips the score just over to a 4 out of 5. I'm hoping that the work on the game will really refine the package because there's something very interesting here. Simply put, The Wandering Village is a very beautiful game. I absolutely adore this painted style, buildings looked cobbled together but cosy, and the larger world and its many biomes look fantastic. Each villager has a cute little look, and their animations are just wonderful. There was a lot of care taken to get this homely vibe for your village and desolate feeling for the outside world, and it absolutely shows. I frequently found myself just stopping to watch my village tick along. Onbu has a great sense of scale, and as they trudge along, the background will shimmy and shake. There's a great sense of movement created, and also a great sense of weight. You really do feel like you're on the back of this massive colossus. The OST is also sublime. It adds great ambience to each region, and some tracks even feel like the kind of things the villagers would sing from day to day. Composer Nukton has done a great job here. 
The sound design does a great job at adding ambience to your village, each building contributes to the soundscape, and with Ombu making noises on top, it creates a nice bit of ticking music. UI is a mixed bag, I think it does a good job at showing you everything you need to know, but navigating it can be a bit clunky, and it looks a bit too sterile to fit in with the rest of the game. It's the sort of thing I'd imagine I'd see in something like City Skylines, rather than a more medieval, almost fantasy city builder. I'm hoping that this gets a visual refinement for the full release. Overall, the art direction here is pretty solid. We're not pushing the boat massively out, but the game looks and sounds good, with the major exception of UI, which just feels out of place. And that's a problem when it's taking up a quarter of your screen real estate. The Wandering Village is getting a solid 4 out of 5 for art direction. Driven from our homes by the toxic spores, we kept wandering, looking for shelter. There's not a lot of narrative content here, there is enough to give the story some context. You are a group of nomads trying to survive in a ruined world, you come across Onbu and form a symbiotic relationship. From there, you travel across the world as your village grows. I do like that each villager has a name, as it makes them feel a bit more real. It's a small detail, but it's always one of those that's more than the sum of its parts. The world building is also fairly limited. You do get some context from scavenger missions, but outside of that, you are very confined to your village. Simply put, you're here for the gameplay over the narrative. This is a very short section, but there really isn't much to say. Presently, the wandering village has some decent context, but I was never invested in the story of the world because there just wasn't enough there. And that lands the narrative a 2 out of 5. The Wandering Village is a game preview, or early access, and that comes with the risk of bugs. Fortunately, I ran into none during my playtime. Presently, this feels pretty technically sound. The content is also pretty solid, you're getting a pretty in-depth city builder with unlimited save slots. Being an early access game, this is not a complete package, but there is enough there presently. There are also four difficulty settings, with a few extra sandbox settings. As for regular settings, here's what you can tweak. UI scale can be adjusted, scroll and movement sensitivity have individual sliders, scroll direction can be inverted, edge scroll can be enabled, and there are also major language options. There are audio sliders for master, music, ambient effects and UI volume, vertical sync and shadows can be toggled, keyboard controls can be completely rebound, controller controls can be viewed but not changed at all. As stated in our gameplay sections, these controls are a little clunky and not being able to tweak anything is a bit rubbish. But at the same time, I'm not even sure how you'd go about remapping these controls at all, because most things require a handful of button presses. Settings also don't have a description of what they do. Most of these are common sense, like UI scaling and audio sliders, but I don't have a clue what edge scroll or vertical sync are, and thus have no idea what I'm actually tweaking. Overall, this is a solid content offering, if a little bare bones as it's being added to, but the settings are pretty limited, even if the staples are present. The Wandering Village is getting a 3 out of 5 for specs. It will take you in the ballpark of 10 to 15 hours to complete The Wandering Village. I think this is a solid length for a run, and the dynamic gameplay does justify that length. You won't be doing the same thing constantly. Hard drive footprint is also tiny. On Xbox, we were being asked for 1.4 gigabytes. Failing a run also only sets you back to your last save, and you can save at any time. I will recommend that you save new save slots rather than overwriting your old stuff so you don't work yourself into a dead end. It's very easy to fit the wandering village into your free time, as you can hop in, work on your village a little bit, and hop back out. The only commitment issue is that the game is still being worked on. You will have to wait for new features, but the devs have included a link to their roadmap in the main menu, so you can have a look through and see what they're working on. It's not a massively detailed roadmap, but it gives a good insight into where the game is going, and from that you can decide if you do want to invest your future time into it. In its current state, The Wandering Village is getting a respectable 4 out of 5 on our commitment scale. We were given an opportunity. Together we will cross this vast poison wasteland. The Wandering Village is worth your time, it's not going to blow your socks off, but it definitely provides an interesting twist on the genre, and there's plenty of room to grow. I'll definitely be keeping an eye on it myself, and hey, maybe we'll even come back for another review once the game is fully released. And provide for all of us, human and animal alike.